so we're looking at the out of the box accuracy as opposed to you know the expert um, configuration um, that you know ultimately a, a very sophisticated or user of the scanner would be able to uh, ultimately decrease the false positives and increase um, you know the true finds um, or at least you know theoretically um, and here's just a, a little diagram about uh, um, showing our, that is that um, the amount of conf as you increase the amount of configuration, uh, which denotes being an expert, um, your accuracy is going to rise. So at the out of box level, you're going to have a lower level of accuracy than you're going to have at the expert configuration, which I think is pretty logical um, and probably the way it works in reality. Um, but you know, some experts are better than others. Um, and so now I'm just getting into the different types of false positives um, that we've det detected. Um, this one we call um, cross-set scripting uh, parameter echoing. Um, and so ultimately, um, uh, you just take, you know, the like the the um, sample app takes the parameters that are sent into the request and echoes them back into the page, um, and that cause. Uh, Causes uh, you know false positives um, because ultimately the 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 scanner doesn't um, you know detect um, it just detects the presence of that string not the execution of it so for cross site scripting um, like if it's in a text field it's just text uh, or a text area um, and it's not going to be executed by the browser so it's not potent it's not a vulnerability but the scanner will just detect the fact that you know you have you know script. Um, alert, you know, one, two, three, four, um, you know, close script um, in the body, and it'll say that that. And so some of them have gotten better about detecting when things are in text area. So if you were to scan a security relevant website that had, you know, cross site scripting examples, um, say Rsnake's website, the scanner is going to go crazy because there's, whole th there's all this text talking about cross site scripting, but it's not really cross site scripting vulnerabilities. So the, the target that that we have just has a, in a text area um, cross site scripting, um, you know, um, an open script tag, an alert function, and a closed script tag. And last year that generated fa false positives in all the scanners. Um, this year the results um, were actually better. Um, oh yeah, yeah. If you closed out the text area, then you're going to break out. You're going to break out of that, um, but I mean, they one of the scanners does do that and has a test to do that, uh, where the other ones don't, and they didn't have that last year. So that's actually one of the advances in the um, signature-based technology um, that has happened. Um, so yeah, um, if the scanner you know is trying to break out of stuff like that, but you know that's so that's the that's the best case is that they you know have the close uh, you know for the for the text area, and they're going to be able to break out of that, right. um, but... So if, if the scanner doesn't break out of the text area, but still reports it has prostate cryptic vulnerability, it's false positive, mm -hmm. it's also false negative at the same time, right? Um, well, I, I mean, I, when you're looking at vulnerabilities, like you kind of have to take the a, a very atomic level, right? Because if you're considering the whole web app, like there's always potential vulnerabilities in a web app that's undiscovered and you don't know what that number is and if you're talking about every parameter like that could be sent to a page then you know for each of those parameters you'd have to have you know hey the fault you have a false positive or uh, you know a false negative or something like like that so the infinite regression of that type of logic you know you know any potential page is going to have you know uh, I mean, not an infinite number of vulnerabilities, but a, a lot of, you know, vulnerabilities. Um, so, I mean, it really depends how, you know, how many parameters, <laughs> um, you know, it, but for this given example of that text field, like with the text in the text area, like it's not vulnerable, you know, and, but the scanner went through and found that text and said it was vulnerable, right? So for that atomic example, um, you can have, you know, a, you can understand, you know, that, um, but once you start extrapolating larger, it becomes harder to get around, you know, like if you wanted to quantitate all of it and come up with some formula. <laughs> um, but uh, continuing on, um, just some quick examples. Um, 
or actually, I think I've covered that one. And then uh, the next one's uh, the SQL parameter echoing. Um, and so basically, it's the same kind of example for cross-site scripting, but with SQL injection. Um, and so um, ultimately, the, the same kind of example is that we just put um, you know error messages inside of text area, and it would see this you know. Um, the error messages and trigger that, hey, I got this error message um, and that was enough. Um, whether or not that didn't, like, and it comes back to the state example, um, is that the, the scanner makes a request and it gets something back. Um, is what it gets back related to what it sent? I mean, it thinks so, right? Because it sent, it sent a request and it got a body back. Like, I mean, if that body's, you know, a custom error page, um, or you know something else, um, it may get. And if it's only looking for like a 200 OK back that it requested this page, it got a 200 OK back. It assumes that page is there, right? It, but does it know that that page is there, or is it the page it's looking for? Um, and so, yeah. Um, which that kind of I'm starting to get into some of our other examples. Um, the mistaken identity is that. Um, Files are called, you know, or pages are called the same. So there's a bunch of different, you know, uh, index.phps. There's a bunch of different search. You know, pls or you know whatever. And so a lot of the signature bases from the scanners are looking for known vulnerabilities in a known product in a, a known page. Um, but there's going to be, you know collisions with other products and custom built apps and so it thinks that you know it's one thing when it's just you know a similarly named page but they haven't like checked some to the page and they haven't you know so they're not actually you know is it real and so a lot of the vulnerabilities we get are you know um, just ob obscure you know vulnerabilities in a product that either the the page is the same or it you know for some reason or not, the, the signature you know detects um, on that um, when you know the product it's what you're testing may have nothing to do with you know the vulnerability, um, and so uh, just um, so the, basically the, it's just generic signature bases um, that at one time there was a vulnerability released in some product and they wrote a check for that specific product um, and. But you know the specificity of the check, um, you know, allows it to match a lot of different, um, you know, products out there. Um, and then um, ultimately, th this is the same kind of you know uh, detection string is um, that you know for cro for SQL injection, um, the vulnerability a lot of times in detecting it is a lot more complex than the mechanism used um, to detect it. So you'll get you know the signatures will you know be based on just you know a simple string of text um, that you know could potentially I've seen where you know you'll have custom error pages um, <clears throat> that um, will take information and it'll just put it in the body. Um, of the page, but it will have sanitized it uh, before it puts it there, um, and so the the SQL injection, you know, injection's not happening, um, but um, you know, like error, the request is getting echoed back into um, you know the body, and so it's matching you know um, on that 